there are two ways to become skilled at something. You can spend a bunch of time practicing and actually learn the skill, or you can come up with some roundabout solution that takes twice as long. Since I'm really good at making stuff, but not much else, I'm going to go with the overly complicated route. To start out, this is version 1, which means it sucks. Up around version 3 or 4 is where you get something that reliably works and doesn't break constantly. Everything before that is basically just testing. The end goal is to reliably hit targets a reasonable distance away. I was honestly surprised how well V1 ended up working. It uses a camera to track targets and two stepper motors to adjust the barrel. I designed as much as possible to be 3D printed, which ended up being pretty much the entire thing. The body was printed out of PLA and it turned out pretty well. The barrel and all of its small parts were resin printed to try to get higher resolution. I spent a ton of time on the barrel itself. I had this really fancy reloading mechanism that was completely air powered with these tiny little valves. It would feed the BBs from the side tubes into the center barrel, then use bursts of air to fire, ideally allowing for a reasonably fast reload rate while being super compact. Since I planned on resin 3D printing it, I had tiny holes running all through it to feed the air where it needed to go, something I couldn't do if I wanted to machine it instead. 3D printing ended up being where most of the issues came from. It simply couldn't hold tight enough tolerances for everything to work well. All of the holes were slightly distorted, making for terrible sealing surfaces and tons of air leaks. But I went on with it anyway, doing my best to make it at least partially functional. In the end, I wasn't able to get the reloading mechanism to work reliably. It worked for a few shots, but I just manually loaded it for the rest. The entire barrel assembly really should be machined. It needs much higher precision parts and a material that's stronger than the 3D printer resin. But even with a machine barrel, I'm not too sure it can reload as fast as I'd like it to for the final version. The heart of this project is really the camera and the software. Being able to aim and fire fast doesn't help if you don't know where the target is. The program is relatively simple. The camera I'm using has two separate video streams. One is standard color and the other is for depth. The color of each pixel in the depth image represents how far away each point is from the camera. I started with trying to track a single colored object, but I quickly ran into issues with it detecting targets randomly. I switched to using dual color targets, specifically with colors that are furthest apart to help avoid false detections. That dramatically helped the tracking. It's still not perfect, but it's good enough for V1. There are a bunch of other functions in the code that allow it to track the history, speed, and acceleration of multiple targets. But best of all, it's able to estimate the future position of the targets and calculate where to move to hit them. It currently supports linear paths, which are if the target is moving at a constant speed in a straight line, or parabolic paths, which are a bit more complicated. If you throw an object, it'll follow what's called a parabolic trajectory, or ballistic trajectory if you want to sound fancy. The horizontal speed will stay constant, but the vertical speed will be accelerating downward due to gravity. Because all objects will follow this path, it's relatively easy to predict where an object will go as long as you know the initial speed. To start testing, I stuck a target to my robot arm, which is completely overkill, but I'm lazy and that was the fastest way to make a moving target. I have the aimbot mounted to the table instead of me holding it, because lazy but also the robot requires two hands to operate. I also stuck a laser on the barrel so I could see where it would hit without needing to fire every time. The first tests were surprisingly reasonable. It tracked the target and aimed close enough to the middle. For some reason it gets way off near the edges. I'm still not quite sure why. I think my math is wrong somewhere, but I'm just going to ignore that for now. This is what the camera sees. To find the target, it first finds everywhere in the image that is close to being blue, then finds everywhere in the image that is close to yellow. Since blue and yellow are opposites, it's very unlikely for the camera to detect both of them right next to each other on anything but the target. Finally, it finds where it sees yellow inside of blue, does some filtering, and then marks that spot as the target. However, that position alone isn't enough. I need the full 3D position of the target. The color image can only tell me the angles of the target relative to the camera. This is where the depth image comes in. Since it knows the angles of the target from the color image, it knows which pixels in the depth image to look at to find the distance to the target. That distance and the angles from the color image, along with some trig, are used to calculate the exact 3D position of the target. 
The smaller green circles show the past locations of the target. It needs those to both keep track of which target is which, and to estimate future positions. I did run into a pretty big issue when I started testing. I ran the program on my PC when I was writing it, but now that I'm out in the garage I have to run it on my laptop. The frame rate dropped way below what was acceptable, so I did some optimization, and by optimization I mean reducing the resolution to potato quality. It can now run at the full camera frame rate and still track the images without much issue. I also added in the future target estimation. The blue circles show where it thinks the target is going to go, and the red circle shows where it could aim and fire to hit the target in the shortest amount of time. You can quite easily see that the linear estimation greatly helps it stay pointing at the target during moves. The issue is it doesn't factor in acceleration, so when the target starts or stops, it doesn't estimate its position correctly and often overshoots or undershoots. The parabolic targets are much more interesting. I can't program the robot to follow a parabolic path since it's too slow, and I didn't want to throw a bunch of targets myself. I made a really simple target that magnetically latches onto a weight. It has a string and a spring that I attach to the robot. That way the robot could slowly pull up on the spring and once the force overcame the magnets, it would launch into the air. It proved to be a bit more powerful than I wanted, so I tied a string across the spring to limit the maximum stretch, which let me adjust the launch to get just the right height. Testing this is where I ran into a lot of issues. It did work sometimes to my surprise, but it's like one out of every four shots. I think the biggest issues are how I'm detecting when the target is launched and the huge amount of jitter in the target detection. It'll still detect targets randomly due to lighting issues and sometimes it will aim in the complete opposite direction of the target. But those issues are for V2. It did hit some so I'm going to show off those and make it seem like it's better than it is. It is super cool seeing it actually work. Detect the target, estimate where it's going to be, then aim and fire. It definitely has potential. This version had minimal design go into it, I just went with whatever looked good at the time. Now that it's gone through some testing, I've determined that pretty much every part needs to be made better. Actual reload, faster motors, better target detection, a more powerful firing mechanism, all sorts of stuff. All of which should be fixed in V2. I also have plans for a V3, but it's a totally different method of firing so it's more like another V1, only way more complicated and hopefully way better. That's all. Thanks for watching.